doing the same. Got a lot of love tonight. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. I'm so excited about tonight's show because we're cooking with a great ingredient. Beer. Oh. Now, I know most of you drink it. Some of you probably wash your hair with it. I never thought about that, actually. It's kind of disgusting when you really think about it. Well, I, I will save that for later. Tonight, I'm going to cook with it. It makes a great leavener for batters. And one of my personal favorite dishes, not only from growing up with it, but even today, I still, at least once a week, my English-style fish and chips. We're going to do that tonight. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. And beer. It's fantastic as a marinade. And we're going to marinate this chicken dish. Do a beer brine chicken. Wait till, you, wait till you see this thing. Oh, notches unknown, I'm telling you right now. Unknown. And it also brings a lot, a lot of depth and flavors with certain dishes. Like, I'm going to braise. I'm going to show you the simple braised cabbage and beer dish that we're going to do, too. Fantastic. Oh, and you know what? Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Lab Band. Oh, yeah. And then, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to show you how to make ice cream with beer. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. Beer, beer, and more beer. You know where? Right here on Emerald Lab. excited. How y'all doing? Welcome to the show. Nice to see you. See, these aren't the cheap seats, huh? <laughs> Boy, let me uh, just quickly, uh, it's a pretty technical subject, but I'm just going to try to make it easy. We always try to do that in the beginning of the show of the subject that we're doing. Let's break beer down for a minute. Basically, you've got three components of making beer. You've got hops, okay? Even kind of stinky, you know? <laughs> Smells like some weed somewhere or something. I don't know. But anyhow, hops. Then you got the cereal part of it. You know, barley, right? Malt. So you got hops, the cereal pot, barley. And the third component of the beer is yeast. Okay? Yeast. Now, if you don't have yeast inside of your beer, then it would be non-alcoholic. Because the yeast is what, with the sugar, sort of fermentates, makes the gases and then the beer, alcohol, you know what I mean. <laughs> but, you ever realize how many different beers there are? I mean, look at this one. This is a, uh, an ale, a lot of ales. There are porters. We see that okay, Buck? Then you have Guinness, which I told you is a stout. I'm gonna show you how, to, I know it sounds crazy, but where do you taste this ice cream later on? And then uh, this is a lager. And then you have this Weiss beer. That's the one that's pretty light and they slice a lemon with it. And, and this is a uh, Bach. And this is one that you can't even pronounce. So, why bother even drinking it, right? That's the way I look at it. Okay, we're going to start by making a simple sort of English-style beer batter. Fantastic. I love this fish and chip thing. But what we're going to do, like, like in London, uh, real chips, not french fries, but chips. So I peeled the potato, dried them real good. 360 degrees, my vegetable oil is getting warm. 
And what we'll do is we'll add those chips in there and start to fry them. They're getting happy already. <laughs> nice to have you, ladies. Thank you. Gentlemen, nice to have you. Tricks coming all show longs. Hang in there. Now, I've got flour. And then we're going to add some baking powder. A little bit of salt. Bam. <laughs> then, we need about a cup of beer. I'm using this pale ale stuff. Pretty good stuff, actually. Eh, about a cup of beer. But this is like a cup and a half, so that's the good thing about cooking like this. <laughs> Cook with some, drink with some. Hey, you know all about those two beer roos, you know? <laughs> so we're gonna add the, uh, the beer. See, in the yeast and all of the flavor from the barley and the hops makes this a really delicious batter and simple. That was one egg, a touch of milk, because it's going to give it some creaminess. So now what we're going to do, now we've got the beer batter. And what you want to do, folks, is be sure you get all the lumps out of it first. And I'll show you the consistency of what it should be like as soon as I get all the lumps out of it. Now, another way that you could do that is you could aerate or sift your flour. That will take care of some of them. But you want to make sure that you got all the, all the lumps out and it's really quite smooth. This is the consistency that it should be in. You see that? Just enough to really coat a spoon. It's another big fancy cooking term. <laughs> yeah, I'm coating a spoon tonight. <laughs> so, we've got that ready. The batter's ready. Our chips are coming along. Now, what kind of fish? For me, probably because of growing up, I like to use codfish. Or you could use haddock. Whatever you use, just make sure it's fresh. You know, that's what people, they say, oh, I don't like fish. What do you mean you don't like fish? Oh, yeah, it stinks. I hate to tell you, but you're eating bad fish if it stinks. <laughs> if you eat fresh fish, it doesn't stink. See, I could sleep with this. I wouldn't, you know? You know what I mean? All right. While we're waiting on our chips, Doc is going to rock out. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back, kids. Hey, we're really cooking here, you know? Cooking with beer tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Having a little, too. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, we really cook here on the show, you see? When the chips get nice and golden brown, a little bit of... <laughs> what is this, Lawrence Welk? <laughs> what is going You gotta be kidding me, right? What is that? Tiny bubbles in my fish and chips. Tiny bubbles. What is this? Tiny bubbles, man. Oh my God. Folks, those of you at home, I promise you, we had no idea that that was going to happen. We have an idea who did it. Okay? You know, his first initial, J. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. So, 
It stopped. Thank God. Getting back to the chips. Oh, only on Emerald Live. Now, the chips get nice and golden brown. What you want to be sure to do, folks, okay, is season them, at least with a little salt when they come out, because, see, that's what they're... Oh, distribution. It's a distribution thing. You see, it just, you know, it could be like... So we got the chips. Now, now you can ask yourself, self, do you like the skin on your fish and chips? No. Me either. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find the skin here, hopefully. So you just get it sort of started like that, and then we'll just take our knife, hold on to the back of the skin. <laughs> no skin. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to season our flour with some essence, and we're going to season the fish too, because now it's happy. And then it depends how big you want your fish, you know, like about pieces like such. Works good for me. Now, now oh, this is a little big. Plus, that's an extra piece for me. <laughs> So now what we do, folks, you ready? Get your vegetable oil clean on the stove. If you're doing this on the stove, obviously at home, you want to be sure that your pot is only about 60% full with oil because it's going to expand not only from what we're adding in it, but just from the heat. Get one of those thermometers. Make sure it's about 360 because you don't want to, uh, you know, redecorate. <laughs> now, dredge it inside of the seasoned flour and then into the beer batter. You see? Tiny bubbles, man. And then really careful. And we'll put it right in our oil, like that. Let's get a couple of pieces going in here. I'm so excited about sharing this new chicken dish with you. I've got a story I'm gonna tell you in a second, but. And people think that you just have to uh, totally submerge your hands in, uh, in this batter. Is that what I was saying? Right, okay. Boy, this is a rough group tonight. Whoo! Bubbles. Yeah. I guess it meant, I guess he was thinking that it was, there's bubbles in beer, so it would be appropriate Maybe so. probably, Maybe right, Doc? So. But still, he should have told us it was going to happen. Right. You, it was, you were totally surprised? Uh, we were all surprised, man. Cliff okay. could have been injured. Oh, it floored me. Yeah, it floored me, man. Cliff, got, you could have been injured. We, I'm glad I got insurance. I know. It's, it's unbelievable. But anyhow, so we're going to add our fish in here now, folks. Get about four pieces in here, and then we'll let this cook. It will generally float to the top when the fish is, is done. Let's check it out. See? It'll float to the top. And then we want to just kind of... You gotta watch it, like a donut. You gotta kinda turn it over. It's only gonna get brown on one side, and I'm gonna show you that. You can just do it with like a little stick like this, you see? Get a shot of that, will you? See, I'm gonna turn this like this here. Doesn't that look fantastic? Oh, one of my favorite dishes. Tata sauce or no tata sauce. All right, while that's frying, because we're on valuable time here. <laughs> <laughs> this chicken dish is called beer brined chicken. I had another name for it, but, you know, they wouldn't let me call it that. Let me show you what it is. We're going to make a brine. Brown sugar, kosher salt, peppercorns, Juniper berries, some clove, and then apple cider, okay? Apple cider. Then, you whisk that in there. Here, whisk that in there for me, will you? Just nice and easy. Here I am. Then we're going to just kind of make sure we're turning our fish and chips here. 
Oh, these are looking fantastic. Woohoo! Okay. Now, smells good, huh? Yeah. Now, what you do is this. We add a couple of bay leaves, cinnamon stick. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a beer. Okay? Actually, we're going to add two beers. <laughs> You're getting me so excited here, folks. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm so excited. So what I'm going to do is add two more beers. And you know what? I'm going to add these two, too. <laughs> and when we come back, another night. Stick around. chicken. I just want to show you a little secret here that they do, particularly in England. They do the first fry like this. They take it out. I add the other pieces of fish in here. You see now these are crispy, but while these are kind of waiting, particularly the potatoes, they can have a tendency of getting a little soggy. So if your potatoes are soggy, then I'll show you what you do. You can always just right at the end of the last fry, just drop in your taters just to crisp them up a little bit. And then we're ready to go. A little piece of fish or two. <laughs> fish or two. Just set that here for a second. Or another way they serve it is a newspaper or in brown bag. So you could do it that style too if you want. Just sort of make a little cone with it like that. And they stuff it in here. Show you. So they'll put one piece of fish like that. Piece of fish kind of like this. Drain this real good. Nice and crispy. The other fish is done. <laughs> there you have it. Little English style fish and chips, folks, okay? Serve with a little malt vinegar. There you go, ladies. Well, they'll serve it in the old bag like this as well. The old English style fish and chips. Now, if you just, for some ungod reason, fell off some other planet, <laughs> you've landed on Emerald Live. <laughs> All right. I want you to count them. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Don't count this one, because... <laughs> so now you know what the real name for this was. We did the brine, and I used to call it six-pack chicken. <laughs> Woo! 
but they would let me call beer brine chicken. So whatever you want to call it, you take your chicken, you wash it real good, and then you put the chicken overnight. How could you not be happy, right? <laughs> I mean, what a way to go. <laughs> Soak me overnight in beer. <laughs> yeah. Now, what you want to do is you got to weight it down. Use one of those fancy china plates you have just to keep it submerged down overnight in the ice box. Okay? Now, this is what I did mine overnight. You want to talk about good. So what you do now, you take this guy out of the beer. And you pat him, you pat him dry. <laughs> I'm not even going there. <laughs> I am going to stick with patting dry. Oh, boy. <clears throat> so, here's what we're going to do. Some onions on the bottom, diced. Carrots. Celery. That would be a meripois. A few garlic cloves. And then that, you know, that chicken neck and giblet stuff that comes in that, you know, like a prize. You know, they even put it in a bag for you. You know, it's like the chicken of Cracker Jacks, you know what I mean? So, what you do is after you pat it dry, looks pretty dry to me. You're going to roast it 30 minutes upside down, up, up like this. Then the next 30 minutes, we're going to flip the bird over and roast it breast side down. It's a little trick. Keeps the breasts nice and moist. Delicious, juicy. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay, are we okay, Rotor over there, babe? All right. So, once it roasts for about an hour, this beer brine chicken or six pack chicken, it looks like this. Oh, but I'm not done yet, just wait. So while that's roasting or resting, let's try this again with a, uh, let's try a fork this time. We're going to just, yeah, it's easier with the fork. So what we're going to do is just let the chicken rest. If you cut it right now, all the juices go. Then you wonder why your chicken's dry. Because what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you. This chicken's having a problem. <laughs> it's wetting on my board. <laughs> no, look. Can you see this? Okay, okay. Hey, then again, it had six beers, right? <laughs> when we come back, another night. Stick around. this purposely for you. So we got our six-pack beer chicken. He's resting. I put the roasting pan on the stove. I added about a half a stick of butter. All right, three quarters. <laughs> Who's counting? Then I take a whisk and take all, get all the, scrape all that stuff down in there, you see? And then we're going to add some flour. Show you a quick pan sauce. The only thing I took out was that neck and that giblet thing. Now you can always add more. Which in this case, see it's a little loose. 
So what we're going to do is add a little bit more flour. Ah, well, why not? So that's basically we've made a roux. Then, now we're going to make a little sauce. I got a little bit of chicken broth here. A little less than a cup. See, and you want to just sort of work that roux in here. Now look, if, it's gonna, if it gets too thick, which this is going to get too thick, don't have to freak out. See, like, you're going, I, I could see it happening already. You're going, oh my God! How am I going to serve that to Johnny? It's okay, relax. Just add a little bit more liquid. You don't have more broth, add a little water like I'm doing here. Just remember one thing. Whenever you're using a thickening agent, like a roux or cornstarch, it'll never be at its full thickening power until it comes to a boil. So, this is going to be a little gravy like this. See, and it's still too thick because I added all that flour in there, right? Don't panic. Add water. Hey, you run out of water? Use wine. Just don't panic, it's gonna be all right. Now, once this gravy comes to the right consistency that you like, some people like it thicker, some people like it a little thinner, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain this chicken, this sauce of chicken. Before you strain it though and serve it, you gotta taste it. How does it taste? Lousy. <laughs> Why? Because we added all that water. So you gotta season it. So I'm gonna season mine with a little salt, some fresh pepper. Now look, starting to boil. Now we'll know how thick it is. Look, can't serve that. The kids will throw it at you. <laughs> so, what you gotta do? Add a little bit more wine or water, okay? Thin it down a little bit. Now, some people like to strain it. Some people like the vegetables in it. I'm one of those kind of guys. It's like, what do the vegetables do to you? So, I keep mine on there. After it rests about 10, 15 minutes, which is how long it'll take you. Look, if you don't want to strain it, you could always use the boat motor. <laughs> you go in there and knock them vegetables back a little bit, you know. Oh yeah, let me tell you. So it's your choice. It's a three case scenario. Leave it like that, use the boat motor or strain it. Hey, you take, you pick. But I'll tell you one thing. When you're ready to serve this chicken, look at how juicy that is. That's because of the brine. You see how juicy that is? That's exactly right. Serve that on the platter, gravy on the side, six pack chicken. There you have it. Oh, we're gonna carve it up. I wanted to purposely show you how juicy that is. You see how much juice already is on that? That's because of the brine. And you want to talk about taste. Oh, my goodness. We're always looking for new chicken dishes. It's worth doing overnight. All right. I'm rendering some bacon here first. Could use pancetta. I'm using bacon. Now, you've got to render the bacon first because if we're going to add onion in here. If you started with the onion, then you add the bacon, the bacon would never get crisp because of the water in the onion. So that's why you start with the bacon first, getting it crispy. And I do a lot of dishes like that. Ma'am, are you okay? Is he bugging you back there? <laughs> well, we'll just add you on the list to the crew, so don't worry about it. All right. Once the bacon is crispy, now, do I take it out? You know, that's the thing. Do I leave it in? I don't know. It all makes up these rules here. What's there, a bacon police on every corner now? <laughs> Look, it's crispy. It's got the bacon... Uh, what is it? It's fat. Let's face it. Hey, 
It's pork fat. Leave it in there. So, all right. Happy birthday. I'm making this for you right now, but I didn't want to tell you that it was going to be a surprise. But case, I'm going to use this pepper mill. I got salt, fresh ground pepper, cooked the onion for about three minutes. Then what I did is this. I just took cabbage. It's great for you. We just never know what to do with it. I chop it up. You can use that machine of yours if you have it. I'm gonna add that in there. A couple of cloves of garlic. Okay? And we're gonna cook this for a little bit. Maybe a minute or two. Then I'm gonna use a dark beer. Okay? I'm gonna use a dark beer and let it stop braising a little bit. It's gonna get happy this cabbage. When we come back, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. Stick around, Doc Gibbs! Joining us, Emma Lagasse here. We're cooking with beer tonight. And uh, that reminds me, before we finish our braised beer cabbage, I've got a Guinness beer, and I'm going to add this inside of a saucepan. Oh, we've used a lot of beer tonight. And what we're going to do is reduce that Guinness. How's that chicken? Incredible, huh? Six-pack chicken. Woo! So I got the beer reducing now. I want to reduce it by at least by half. And I'll show you that in a second. And I also got some whipping cream, heavy cream on the stove, bringing up. Folks, whenever you work with milk or beer, excuse me, milk or cream at home on the stove, unless you want to renovate your house, be careful. Because it will ignite if it spills over. So please, I always check mine with a thermometer because I'm making ice cream here. I'm trying to get it to 170 degrees. I'm going to show you that in a second. Another thing that you can do before we get to the ice cream, you could always, with the cabbage, if you have a problem with just eating cabbage straight, you can always cut it with other vegetables. And one of the ones that I suggest is this guy here. You're probably always wondering what this is when you go to the grocery store. It's celery root. And it's absolutely, it's stronger flavor than celery. It's absolutely fantastic. You peel the outside edge, okay? Let me show you that. You peel the outside edge, just like a potato. You see it's hard like that? And then the white celery in it. It makes wonderful mashed potatoes. You add a little bit of celery root in your mashed potatoes, fantastic. So what I've done is just sliced it thin and what I'm going to do is cut my cabbage with a little bit of celery root like this. And this would be perfect to also serve as an accoutrement to that wonderful beer brine chicken that we just did. And it doesn't have to cook that much. The other great thing, you see the cuts that I have of them, the other great thing that you can do is you can fry them. They make wonderful chips, celery root chips. Fantastic. All right. Going over to the Guinness ice cream. When the Guinness reduces at least by half or two thirds, it's gonna look just like this here. It means we got all the concentration of those flavors that we talked about earlier, those hops and the grains from the cereal, right? Okay? Now, what we're gonna do is this. I've got six egg yolks. We're gonna make the ice cream custard. I've got sugar. I'm gonna sweeten my whipping cream with the sugar. <laughs> I 
going to dissolve that sugar in that whipping cream. Then, I'm going to flavor it with vanilla. We take a vanilla bean. This is what that is there. You take a little knife. You split it in half from tip to tip. That's where all the flavor of the vanilla is, is inside here. You see, you just got to scrape the inside. See all that? That's all the little beans. We're going to put that inside of the cream. Watch. Instant replay. <laughs> going to scrape it. And that's where all the bean is, right there, inside of the vanilla pod. Watch what that's going to do. We're just going to add one. It's very powerful. See how you got all those little specks in there already? So now, I'm going to add the Guinness to the cream. 170 degrees. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, they steal everything around here. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We're going to temper the cream and Guinness because you see, if we add the egg yolks in here, it's a very basic ice cream recipe. If we added the egg yolks in there, we'd have a very, very good chance that the egg yolks would scramble because this would be too hot. So we're tempering the egg yolks right now, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna whisk this back in. So that way there's no scrambled eggs, okay? Another precaution, when you get it to 170 degrees, you can strain it, making sure there's no scrambled egg. And then you see this expensive vanilla bean right here. We got all the vanilla flavor in here. Just let this dry out a couple of hours so it's dry. Then you can just put it in your sugar. You'd have vanilla sugar. Your sugar will be like vanilla. All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to let this cool. So it's good to make it the day before. And then you do it in the manufacturer's suggested uh, whatever ice cream machine you got. This is what it looks like after it's cool. Nice spotted with vanilla bean. So I'm going to put it in my machine. See how custody it is when it cools? Okay, got it in my ice cream machine. Press churn. We're gonna let it churn when we come back. Guinness ice cream kicked up a notch. Stick around. That's it. Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Band. <laughs> Cliff Charles, Teddy on drums. Welcome back, folks. So our ice cream, as it begins to start churning, it will get thicker and thicker. And uh, probably in about another minute or two, what I do now is take it out and freeze it, and hard freeze it. Can do them in plastic containers. I generally just do them in these sort of, sort of pint containers. They work well for me. Keep a nice lid on it. Then, I'm going to show you another thing we're going to do with scalded cream chocolate. This is uh, what's called a quick ganache. Fancy name. We're going to just mix this in here like such. It's like chocolate sauce. See that? Then not only I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla liquid and some honey. Now, now we're ready for business. I'll take my Guinness ice cream right in a glass.
See the color of that Guinness ice cream? A little bit of this honeyed ganache. <laughs> Cooking with beer. <laughs> there you have it. Guinness ice cream with chocolate honey sauce. How better does it get, right? It's very, very unusual. I told you it was your birthday, and there's your little... Where do you try this Guinness ice cream? Cooking with beer, right? Hey, I'm Emerald Adasi. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody.